topic on the table, and I'll tell you what, we talk about the word earthquake sometimes and all these stories break. This thing on the PGA Tour is absolutely amazing. Here's the backstory. Last week at the FedEx Cup playoff in Delaware, Tiger Woods called an emergency meeting with Rory McIlroy, and they invited 23 other guys on the PGA Tour to come to Wilmington, Delaware. Most of the guys were playing in that tournament. Uh, to come to the BMW Championship, and they held a private meeting, and they talked about the future of the PGA Tour in the wake of what's happened with LIV, the Saudi Super League, stealing 30 players mm. who've gone abroad to play mm -hmm. and been suspended by the PGA. And it's the first time in the history of golf that all the superstars or what was left of the superstars got together privately outside of the circle of PGA leadership and just met amongst themselves to talk about the future of the tour and what should be done. Well, they came up with a 10 point proposal that they made uh, to Jay Monahan, the commissioner of the PGA, and it was accepted. And they are making radical financial changes in the PGA tour effective a year from now. This, this is in response to what LIV has done to steal all these golfers. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'm going to give you I'm going to give you a question at the end of my statement here. I just want you to pay attention. Follow me. Okay. Amongst the changes, there they are going to elevate 16 tournaments on the tour and make them elite status and attach a 20 million dollar prize to each of those tournaments. And I'm led to believe it has not been named yet. I am led to believe that the Farmers Open at Torrey Pines is going to be one of those elite tournaments. It'll right on. be 20 million, which is absolutely amazing. Now, as a trade-off, the commissioner said, if we're putting this money out there for each of these, quote, elite tournaments, I'm not talking about the Masters or the U.S. Open or, or mm -hmm. you know, the, the Grand Slams. I'm talking about 20 other or these tournaments. You guys have to play in them. Now, the old rule was that John Raleigh could select 15 tournaments a year and play anywhere he wanted as long as he got to 15. Mm -hmm. The top 20 guys on the tour have agreed to play in every one of these elite tournaments, which means that the Phil Mickelson's of the world are not going to boycott what was the Farmers Open. Right on. Everybody has to go forward. In addition to that, they have this player program that helps promote the sport. And they have they have points that they give out to each guy on the tour for what he does on the course, but what he does in the community on behalf of the PGA. They are making available $100 million bonus money for the top 20 players to split based on their achievements on the course and off the course in any given calendar year. It's called a PIP. Mm. Kind of hard to explain, but it's a way to give players more money for things they do in the community on behalf of the PGA Tour. It's kind of fascinating. Right on. There's a developmental tour. It's called the Corn Ferry Tour. It's like minor league baseball. Was that like the Nike Tour back in the day? Back in the day. Yeah. And they have taken $500,000 and they have thrown that into a bonus pool for all the young guys who are trying to get to the tour card. The top guys on that tour are all going to get paydays as part of this bonus system mm -hmm. that the PGA has made available. In addition, they're coming up with money for anybody who fails to make the cut in any tournament on the calendar. Mm -hmm. He will get paid a stipend, a travel fee stipend. Okay to kind of cover his expenses. You know, we, we know about Tiger and we know about Phil and we know about the guys making Boku bucks, mm -hmm. but the guys in the back end on the leaderboard that don't make the cut, they're scuffling financially. They may have sponsorship, but not the sponsorships that the superstars have. So the PGA has added that uh, into the equation. Uh, there was conversation. I, I got this from an agent. There was conversation as part of the Tiger Rory thing that there might be a one-time offer from the PGA to the guys that went abroad, that they would lift the suspension if those guys would agree to come back. But Jay Monahan said today uh, that in Atlanta, where the tour championship is underway, the $75 million final event of the year, he said, we are not lifting the suspensions to any of the 30 guys that have gone abroad, mm -hmm. that they made their decision. And by the way, they're suing us. So why would we let them back? So right. That it's it's interesting what has transpired. Uh, Tiger called it. They had ideas going in. They came out of that meeting in Delaware a week ago with kind of a blood oath that they would stick together, 
nobody would leave the tour from this day forward to go to Saudi Arabia's tour, uh, and that they, they would drive towards unity in a business partnership. So I just gave you details of all the things that they've agreed to, and they agreed to it in a very lickety-split fashion. Mm -hmm. Here's my question, John, and I'll challenge you to answer this. PGA all of a sudden has all this money to give away to the players. <laughs> all of a sudden? <laughs> yeah. Uh, where was this the last two years, the last five yeah. years, the last 10 years? Right. When people like Phil Mickelson were saying they're hoarding their money and they're not sharing it with the guys that are making the tour successful. Right. Might be a shred of two, truth for what Phil Mickelson had to say. So interesting going forward. Jay Monahan says this is a win-win for everybody. I just asked the question, how come this was not made available prior? Because now it's obvious that you were sitting on gold for a long time mm -hmm. and not sharing it with the guys that are making the tour tremendously successful. So response. So, I mean, the reason it wasn't there was because there was no competitive league. I mean that, and once LIV came onto the stage, then yeah, now they had options. Now they had choices like free market capitalism. I mean, that's what's going on here now. It's a shame. I mean, everything going on with LIV and the Saudi prince and, and all the political and unrest in the middle East that's connected to that makes it, in my opinion, an immoral move on that level. But on a financial level, it's hard to blame them. All right, let's move on. 